quick revision video on atomic structure and if you're not already subscribed please hit the button. So we'll start with the fundamental particles so these are the subatomic particles that make up atoms protons, neutrons and electrons we need to know their relative charges, their relative masses and their location within the atom. So we'll start with the relative charges proton is 1 plus, neutron is 0 and electron is 1 minus. Relative masses now, so 1 for the proton, 1 for the neutron, and 1 over 1836 for the electron. You can get away with 1 over 2000, and you can even get away with saying negligible. Location now, so the protons are in the nucleus, and so are the neutrons. And the electrons are found in orbitals which are outside the nucleus. So we're going to move on to isotopes now. So we'll start with this. Every atom of an element has the same number of protons. So for example, every atom of nitrogen has got seven protons. Almost all elements exist as a mixture of isotopes. And isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons. So they've got the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons, and so that's going to give them different masses. So how do we represent isotopes? So the first thing is to say is the X here is the element symbol. The A is the mass number or the nucleon number, and that tells us the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And the Z is the atomic number or the proton number, and that tells us the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. So what about the electrons? Well, atoms have the same number of protons and electrons because they are neutral. If you remember, the protons have a one plus charge, the electrons are one minus, and so therefore, if they're the same in number, the atom will be overall electrically neutral, no overall charge. That's obviously different for ions, but we're gonna come on to that. And since the protons and the neutrons make up the mass of an atom, you can work out the number of neutrons by subtracting the Z, the atomic number, the proton number, from the mass number. So A minus Z gives you the number of neutrons. So we'll finish with a couple of quick exercises. So here's the first one. How many protons, electrons and neutrons are there in the three particles on the screen? So the first thing you'll notice is the atomic numbers are missing for magnesium and lithium. That's not a problem. The exam boards often do that, so just go to your periodic table and your data sheet and you can find them there. So magnesium, it's 12, and lithium, it's three. So the proton numbers, the easiest one to start with, that's just the atomic number, so 17, 12, and three. So moving on to electrons now, you need to be careful and see if you've got a charge. You can see on the first one, it's Cl minus, so that means there's one extra electron than the atom, so it's obviously got 18 electrons. The magnesium in the middle there, that's got no overall charge, so that's gonna have the same number of electrons, so 12. The lithium ion, well, that's one plus, so it's lost an electron, so that's two electrons. And then finally, for neutrons, we subtract the small number from the big, so it's 18 for the Cl minus ion, 12 for magnesium, and it's going to be four for the Li plus ion. So the last one we're going to look at is this one here. How would you represent a particle that has 23 electrons, 26 protons, and 34 neutrons? So the obvious place to look at first is the number of protons. That's telling us that we've got iron. And the next thing I'm going to look at is the electrons. Are they the same? No, there are three fewer electrons than protons, so it's got a three plus charge. And now for the mass number, it's the protons and neutrons that make up the mass. So we're adding 26 to 34 and we get 60. So that's how you would represent that.